Good morning, everyone. I'm going to give it a few minutes and let some of you tune in to the Facebook Live on this Monday. We are discussing campgrounds today, camping, and when you can expect to enjoy the wonderful outdoors um, as far as a recreational setting. So I'm going to turn the camera around. You can see I'm sitting in my car this morning and we are at Mommy Bay State Park. Beautiful spring morning, a little chillier than the weekend. But I think for a lot of us that weekend, this past weekend was so beautiful. It's left a lot of people wondering, when can I go camping? Um, I know we've gotten a lot of questions and a lot of people have been texting asking when they can expect to take the RV, the tent, or go out to the cabin. And I'm going to let you know about what is allowed currently under the stay-at-home order, the extended stay safe stay-at-home order for Governor DeWine, as well as when you can expect um, full camping to resume. Obviously, there will be some changes, um, but what you can expect uh, to get out. So... I'm going to give you the overview like I always do, and then once I give you the overview, I'll try to answer whatever questions uh, you guys may have, and we can go from there. So when it comes to camping, you need to know campgrounds are probably going to be closed for the next several weeks here in Ohio. And Governor DeWine said this last Friday, he said that the thing they're most concerned about is uh, common areas as well as campgrounds, um, common areas at campsites, and also families from different camping spots mingling because when you're camping, you want to go see different families. You want to go see your friends. And that's what Governor DeWine says they're actually concerned about when it comes to um, spreading COVID-19. So that is just something uh, to be aware of as far as what they are looking at when it comes to reopening our campgrounds. So what you need to know when it comes to the exceptions, well, first I'm going to go through the closures and then I'll go to the exceptions. So again, uh, all campgrounds are closed here in Ohio and this includes this is included under places of public amusement uh, whether they're located inside or outside campgrounds recreational camps RV parks and cabins are all closed um, but there are some exceptions to this so the exceptions are if you live in an RV and that is your primary place of residence um, you live there year round and you have no other viable place to live, then that is okay for you to live at a campground. There, the facilities are open to you. Also, campground closures exclude cabins, mobile homes, and other um, self-contained units meant for families where you have a full season agreement already established. So say you rent a cabin year round on a lake or you rent a camp spot year round at a certain site, um, that is totally fine. So that is something that is excluded uh, if you have a full year, a full time lease for a certain spot versus just coming in for the week. Weekend, that is um, that is okay but if you are one of those people who those two exceptions right you have a year-round lease for a camping spot or you reside in a RV and you live on a campground um, if those are two exceptions that apply to you then you ha still have to follow CDC guidelines social distancing guidelines and best practices but for the mass vast majority of us if we're wanting to just come in and camp pitch a tent take our RV out or come to a cabin campgrounds are closed to us so we can't go out recreationally and just camp until campgrounds reopen now when will campgrounds begin to reopen governor DeWine says he has an advisory team working on this right now. They're working on best practices to safely reopen campgrounds and other outdoor activities and recreational spaces over the next uh, several weeks. So it may be June before we can go camping here in Ohio. That's just the reality based on what Governor DeWine said on Friday. He said uh, him and Lieutenant Gov he and Lieutenant Governor Houston said that they are working on this plan to safely reopen campgrounds. They think it can be done. They're optimistic. They think that they can close common areas and encourage social distancing. And I know a lot of private uh, campground owners have already decided to try to test the waters and open back up. Um, that way they can uh, see how things go and they're also employing those social distancing guidelines. So we just, as far as those private campgrounds go, we know that all campgrounds per the order are supposed to be closed, but if you are going to a campground privately that is opening up, that may be an option because as I said, I know a lot of people are starting to uh, go to some of these private camp areas, but we know that our state parks and 
camping areas in our state parks will be closed um, for the foreseeable future. Hopefully that plan will be accelerated with the nicer weather and the advisory team will get some best practices together and get that opened up for us very soon. But right now, um, that is just what we're looking at because Lieutenant Governor Houston did say several weeks. Over the next several weeks, they're going to get that plan together. So um, several weeks could mean June. I hope it's not so, but that could be the issue. Um, so again, they're trying to figure out how people can have a great camping experience while uh, avoiding potential germ spread. So we'll continue to keep you guys updated. But again, campgrounds are closed for the next several weeks until uh, the plans are put in motion to safely reopen. And there are two exceptions. Number one, if you live in an RV or on a camp spot year round, that's your only viable place of residence, that's okay. Or if you have a full time lease, like a year round lease set up for like a cabin, that is okay too. But that is where we are at when it comes to our campground. So now I'm going to look through some of your questions. And if some of you are just tuning into this Facebook Live, we are discussing campgrounds. And when I finish, you can go back to the beginning uh, and just watch the beginning and get the update as far as our campgrounds and when you can expect to be camping again. Several weeks until the plan's put together, according to Lieutenant Governor Houston. So hopefully by June. I know this uh, weekend, this past weekend was such a tease because it was so beautiful. I know a lot of us want to be outside uh, enjoying this wonderful weather. So I will we'll continue to keep you updated here at WTOL and let you know uh, as far as when our public campgrounds will begin to open. I know a lot of private campgrounds are staying closed to be safe, but there are some private campgrounds I have heard of that have begun to reopen as well, employing social distancing and sanitization and all of that, and they've closed common areas. So when campgrounds do reopen publicly, I know that common areas being closed is likely to be an option. So let's see what some of your other questions are. I see a lot of you asking, when will the Ohio DMV open back up? As of last week, um, the Ohio Ohio DMV did not have a reopening plan, but I know a lot of you, if you're worried about expired licenses, expired registration, vehicle tags, all of that, or if you have just recently purchased a vehicle privately and you need to get a tag for it, don't worry. Know that because the DMV is not open, people are, police are not going to be ticketing you for having an expired license if it was expired during the time of the closures and this pandemic. So if you have purchased a new vehicle privately recently and you're wondering what to do about that, keep the purchase agreement. What I've been saying is keep the purchase agreement maybe in your glove box or in the seat beside you. I'm just in an easily accessible place like where you keep your insurance. And that way, uh, if you are pulled over for not having any tags, you can show your purchase agreement and say, hey, I'm just waiting for the DMV to open. I recently got this vehicle and, um, and then I will go get my tag as soon as the DMV opens. So... I know for some of you, however, if you have a student or a child who's getting their learner's permit or their driver's license and they really need that, uh, I know that that doesn't leave you very many options because you really can't do anything until the DMV opens officially. So I will we'll continue to keep you updated at WTOL as far as when a plan comes down for that. But as of right now, um, the DMV does not have a reopening date. But we know that they are working on plans to safely reopen. Uh, I think a lot of things that leaders are concerned about is that when they finally do reopen the DMV, I know a lot of you are patiently and anxiously waiting to get in there and get your new vehicle tags, get your license, get Get your registration figured out if you're a 16 year old needing your driver's license or someone with a learner's permit i know that you're waiting on that because you may need a state id for different legal things so if that is the case i know that um, a lot of our dmvs are going to be very crowded once they reopen so our leaders are trying to work on a plan to reopen them without crowding and without for social distancing so that's um where we are at right now so um, let's see what some of your other questions are. Uh, I see Lisa Ellison saying that her license is expired. She really hopes they open the B&B soon. Yeah, Lisa, um, don't worry. I know your driver's license is expired, but if it expired, you know, right now in this time of the pandemic and everything going on, obviously you can't go and get it fixed. So you're not going to get in trouble for that. You shouldn't get in trouble for that. Police have said, uh, the governor has said that they are not penalizing people because you obviously can't do anything about it. Um, so let's see what some of your other questions are. Um, 
So I see Brian Hamilton asking, what's the difference between seasonal and weekend camping? Camping is camping. Yeah, uh, if you're a camping lover, I mean, you might even pitch a tent in your backyard if you can't go out to a campsite. So if you can go at any point, uh, go and, and enjoy. But I know as far as our public campgrounds um, and uh, most of our private campgrounds as well, per the order, they are supposed to be closed. So that is uh, where we are at right now. Um, Let's see, Christina Nelson, uh, yes, so you're saying camping is social distancing and you're saying June, really. So Christina, I know a lot of people share your feelings. They believe that camping is very a very easily social distance activity, right? Like RV spots are well uh, spaced. You know, most RV spots are more than six feet apart. Uh, many cabins are much farther apart than that, of course. So when it comes to camping, there's a lot of space spread out. Uh, Governor DeWine said that he was optimistic. He said this is camping is something that it's easy to social distance in. So he was very optimistic that social distancing could happen and that camping could be perfectly safe. But he said that he was concerned about those common areas and then families coming together and mingling um, at our campgrounds. But I hear what you're saying. I, I can see how camping is much more socially distanced than say going to the movie theater or a sporting arena. So we'll just have to wait to see what kind of plan um, the advisory committee comes up with. Let's hope it's sooner rather than later, but I know that they said it was um, several weeks over the next few to several weeks that they would be working on that. So um, I know, I just know from what they said, a few to several weeks that would put us in June, but, um, let's see what some of your other questions are. So yeah, Michael, I see Michael is saying Sunny's and Wauseon open this past weekend for seasonal campers only. So that might be, I know another viewer actually just commented that as well. So it might be those seasonal campers could be if you have a year round lease, um, at the facility, then you are able to come and take advantage of your lease. That is okay. But when it comes to people coming and camping on the weekend, um, they are not allowing that yet. And the difference is because if you're a seasonal camper and say you have a lease at a place to come camp whenever you would like, not everyone does that. So there are less likely to be crowds when you have a few families doing seasonal camping versus weekend camping. You have lots of families doing that and it can very easily become a crowded campground, a crowded uh, facility, which is what leaders aren't wanting. So again, every campsite's different. Some campsites obviously have a lot of room to spread out and won't face crowds that other campgrounds are that may be a little bit um, smaller. So. Um, that's just what we will have to wait and see what leaders are going to find out when it comes to that. But Tracy Siebert, I see a lot of people will become seasonal. Yeah, you bring up a good point. I wonder um, what campgrounds will be opening seasonal applications and if they're going to be doing that because a lot of families may be saying, hey, it may pay for us to become a seasonal camper so that way we can go take uh, advantage of that. So yeah, I know a lot of you guys are frustrating because you're very excited to be camping with the weather getting nicer. Obviously, it's a beautiful morning. It was a beautiful past weekend. Um, I see Carita Stevens saying they were, uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, Car Carita Stevens. Um, not sure if I'm saying your name right, but to the viewer who is saying they were supposed to be camping this past weekend, you're not alone. I uh, heard, I know of a few other friends and heard of some viewers as well who were telling me how they were supposed to be camping and they weren't able uh, to camp this weekend because there, our state parks have closed down for weekend campers. So if you were in a weekend camping situation, I relate, I understand what you're going through. Um, so when it comes to seasonal camping versus the weekend camping, I see some people asking about this. What's the big deal? What's the difference? The difference per leaders, right? I'm only telling you what they're telling us, but they are concerned about crowds and they're concerned about a lot of families mingling. So if you are a seasonal camper, there are a lot less of you. So seasonal campers come in and there's just a few, there's less likely to be crowds versus weekend campers. Uh, a campsite can quickly become crowded. A camping area can quickly have a lot of different families mingling, which is what leaders are trying to avoid. Um, 
So, um, yeah, I see Michael saying they open on Friday for seasonal campers only, no weekenders. Um, and I know that's what a lot of um, different parks are trying to do to be safe. Um, some private parks I have heard did open for weekend um, weekend campers, but I know that um, they were also being very cautious about it because technically under, I mean, I'm not the one to enforce the rules, right? It is the governor's, per the governor's order, but per the governor's order, um, all parks are supposed to be closed under that public amusement section. So if campgrounds are reopening, um, private campgrounds are reopening, most of them I know are just for those seasonal campers, not for weekenders because um, seasonal are the only exception right now. So let's see what some of your other questions are. I know some of you are asking um, about um, socially distance. Yeah, I see Donna Baker saying you can social distance better at a campground than a retail store. Um, and outside is great for mental health. And I think, you know, you bring up a great point. And that's why Governor DeWine has always said they want to keep our metro parks open and our state parks open. But um, I am hopeful that they will get this worked out quickly. Um, and I think people putting pressure on them to get it worked out will help because I think a lot of us recognize that of all the activities we could be doing, going outside and camping is really one of the best things to do right now um, and really helps our sanity in times like these. So uh, I feel you guys, I know what you're going through because I would like to also go camping if it were possible. It's been, be has been some beautiful weather this past weekend um, and we're likely to see that as the summer, we get into summer. I see Lee saying she needs to transfer plates. I need some of you also um, saying that you need to, I see Beverly saying that she got sent a check for new tags but haven't received anything. She also wants to get the license with the emblem to be able to fly eventually and all of that all of those issues so I recommend you guys if you are wondering um, with the whole BMV opening and what you're wondering as far as certain um, limits and cutoff dates I know that everything is in a gray area right now with this pandemic so a lot of these different deadlines have been extended a lot of the different things that we were seeing are not in these tight windows anymore so if you're worried about a cutoff date Beverly I would say reach back out to where you get um, your license from like you're talking about an emblem to be able to fly eventually I would say you reach back out to that program and ask them because I know that a lot of places have extended deadlines. Um, and when it comes to transferring plates, when it comes to getting new tags, all of that stuff, um, realize you're not gonna get dinged if your plate's expired. You're not gonna get dinged to transfer because right now everything is closed and I know we wanna get this stuff done, but you won't face a penalty for not having it done. Um, and I see some of you are asking about CDLs. CDLs are still being processed because our truck drivers are essential and we need as many of them as possible on the road, keeping our supply chain going. So CDLs are something that I know DMVs are still processing, but you have to go through, um, you know, you have to call them and go through a certain process. If you have a CDL, a commercial license, you already know how to do this and you know how it works. Um, but for the vast majority of us, that doesn't apply to us. But if you are a commercial license holder, uh, they are still processing licenses for you. Um, but let's see, Katrina Boyd is asking, do I know anything about the second stimulus payment? So Katrina Boyd, as of right now, legislation for new stimulus payments has not been signed into law. Um, as of right now, that is not a reality, but Tomorrow on our Facebook Live, I will look that up, more details to see where it is at as far as our House, our Senate, um, and if it is potentially going to become a reality, if it's possible, we could see that. As of right now, however, it, no, it's not a law and it hasn't been passed, but I will keep you updated. Um, let's see what some of your other question are, eh, what some of your other questions are. Um, I see that um, someone responded to Beverly, Sean Karen, you're saying they extended the deadline for new IDs. Yeah, so I know a lot of places have extended deadlines because that is what we are um, facing um, right now in the sense of we are facing 
unprecedented times. So a lot of people ha people have extended those social distance or excuse me have extended those deadlines um, for you to be able to get licenses and other things that you need done because they realize life isn't normal right now. So let's see what some of your other questions are. Bill Dunlap is saying, explain the risk difference between the permanent camper and the recreational camper. Recreational campers are probably safer and more apt to social distancing than the permanent campers. Um, someone please explain the difference. I think it has a lot to do with the permanent campers pay a big lot to rent and owners don't want to lose revenue. And if this isn't true, someone give me a logical viable answer. So Bill, yes, I think I can tackle that for you based on what leaders have told us. So you're right, absolutely. Campgrounds, private campgrounds essentially do make a lot of money on our seasonal campground, or seasonal campers. They don't want to lose any money from the seasonal campers who pay a lot of money to camp there year round. Um, and so that is a concern. You're absolutely right. But the reality is seasonal campground, seasonal campers are only a small percentage of overall camp grounds revenue. When you think about it, you know, oh, you may have all of these campsites, a certain percentage are held for permanent and seasonal campers, and then the rest are open to recreational and weekend campers. So when you have seasonal campers, it's a smaller per percentage. They're coming into camp and it, it's not crowded. That's the big issue that Governor DeWine mentioned on Friday. It's not, um, what he's most concerned about are the crowds and different people coming together and mingling. When you have recreational campers, coming out on weekends you have a huge influx of people that fill up all the spots it can become very crowded very quickly obviously different campsites are different you know some campsites have a lot of space to spread out other sites do not um, but the reality is that they are afraid of people coming together spreading germs families mingling and getting in close and confined spaces when it comes to the common areas however it is likely that they will just close common areas when they reopen campgrounds i know that for a lot of seasonal campers common areas are already closed so that's already not an option public restrooms in certain places or um, when it comes to like dining areas, pavilions, all of those areas are roped off so people who are camping, even if you're seasonal, you can't enjoy them. You have to still follow social distancing guidelines. But Bill, to answer your question, yes, partly it's the money. Um, campgrounds don't want to lose the revenue from seasonal campers. And Governor DeWine, I think, acknowledged that when it came to the, he takes recommendations from businesses, he takes recommendations from the people who are being affected. And I think that that was a reason for their decision to make that an exception. But it was also because seasonal campers only make up a small percentage of overall campers and it wasn't likely to be crowded it's not likely to be crowded when it comes to that but recreational campers come in on a weekend not that they can't follow social distancing of course by any means it's just that you're likely to have crowds you're likely to have more people um, all jammed together and filling up spaces so that was just the concern um, that Governor DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Houston mentioned on Friday when it came to the difference um, between the two. Um, so that is just what leaders are discussing. So I see Lori asking who I am and who makes me an expert. Lori, I am a reporter and I am not an expert. I'm only telling you what our leaders are saying. So I'm giving you insight into what Governor DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Houston said on Friday. So you may uh, have some kind of timeline. You can know when to expect to be camping again because I know a lot of people are really wanting to get out and do this because the weather's been so nice and you're really looking forward to making the most of it. Tamara Golden is asking, are parks open? Tamara, yes, they are open. They are just not open for camping. Um, so that's just what um, leaders have said so far. Tracy Seibert, I see you're saying camp without mingling. Stay inside your camper, lol. Yeah, Tracy, it's an interesting world of camping that I think we're facing. Um, I'm sure families can get out and explore trails and other things as they've been doing, but uh, as it comes to opening our campgrounds fully for everyone, I know it's going to be an interesting thing to see how that happens. Um, 
when it comes to how leaders are going to do it. I just expect when it comes to this, they're probably going to close the common areas. I know a lot of seasonal campers are already facing that when they go to these private camping areas. Um, the common bathrooms, pavilions, that sort of thing, picnic table areas are closed down, but um, the trails are open and all of the other outdoor activities. So uh, let's see what some of your other um, questions are. Ashley Werner is saying country campground and White House is set to open this weekend for seasonal campers only. Many of the seasonal campers are senior snowbirds who live there in the summer. Yeah, Ashley, um, I know a lot of different, that's a, uh, thank you for adding that because uh, I know someone said a campground, we were talking about a campground in Wauseon opening up. We, I heard of a campground in Sandusky I knew of that was opening and you're talking about someplace in White House as well. So yeah, it looks like a lot of private campgrounds are already beginning to reopen, but they're just opening for those seasonal campers, not for weekend or recreational campers uh, just yet. Um, so we will continue to keep you updated as to a certain timeline when you can expect to get out camping as a re recreational camper. But as of right now, it's going to take several weeks, probably not until June before they have a plan, unfortunately. And hopefully the pressure will help them to develop a plan quicker. I just know that that was what Governor, Lieutenant Governor Houston said Friday is that they were working on a plan and it was going to take several weeks. Um, and their advisory committee was working on that. Um, Teresa Lynn, you're saying your husband just got a notice he will lose his CDL unless he presents updated documents by August 3rd. Teresa, um, August 3rd is a ways off, so he's likely not going to lose his CDL. If he has until August 3rd, I think that um, we're expecting the DMV, we're expecting everything to be open by that time. Um, obviously not open normally, but open. Open with safe distancing, social distancing, safe practices, that sort of thing. So hopefully your husband will be fine if he has until August um, 3rd. So that's where, that's um, according to what leaders are saying right now is that they are hoping we can have reopening and be in the, through the different phases um, by that time. So, Beverly, you're saying most campgrounds have a waiting list to get seasonal sites. Um, and you bring up a good point. I know, especially in campgrounds where a lot of people really want to camp, um, they do have a waiting list because a lot of people want to go there. And you have to, if there are only a few spots, they don't have it um, for everyone. But I know some camp some smaller areas that have more sites that are uh, maybe not as in high of a demand don't have waiting lists. But you bring up a great point. Most campgrounds do, so not everyone's going to be able to get that. Um, let's see what some of your other questions are. Um, if there are any other questions, if you are just uh, tuning in and you are just coming into this Facebook Live, we are discussing campgrounds, and uh, we are about 20 minutes in, so when I end this, you can go back to the beginning uh, and watch, and that way... Um, you can catch the update as to what to expect when it comes to our campgrounds. Again, campgrounds are closed, um, but the exceptions are if you live like in an RV and that's your only viable place of residence, the facilities are open to you. Or two, if you're a seasonal camper and you have like a full-time lease at uh, a campground for like an RV site, a cabin, that sort of thing, then that's okay too. Um, those are the only two exceptions. Otherwise, campgrounds are closed. Um, so... Let's see, um, let's, that's exactly what leaders are saying. So we'll see when they will um, open, but um, I know that is going to be uh, a little bit of time um, before we see campgrounds reopened fully. So that's just where we are at. I know some of you are saying this is background, backwards because the metro parks are open, um, but campgrounds are closed. Um, you're pointing out grocery stores um, and all of that stuff. I know that a lot of this, to you, I know a lot of you guys are saying um, it doesn't make sense, but uh, this is just what we are looking at. I know when it comes to this, crowds are the main things that leaders are worried about. So, you know, a campground crowd isn't technically essential, according to their reasoning, but, you, you know, it may be essential that you have to go into the grocery store and get some essential items. Um, same thing, seasonal campers make up fewer percentage of camp overall so they're less likely to be crowds whereas with recreational campers a lot of people come in on the weekend and that's the crowds is what they're trying to avoid 
Uh, Tamara Golden is asking, are parks like Pearson Park open? Yes, that is one of our metro parks and it is open um, right now. So um, it is our, the only thing that is closed at parks um, are the campgrounds. And most metro parks don't, none of our metro parks really have campgrounds. It's our state parks, um, like Marmy Bay uh, State Park here where we are at this morning. So um, I am looking through some of your questions. If I missed um, some of your questions and I didn't get to it in this Facebook Live, you can message um, my Facebook page, Ariel Onstott, um, and I will try to answer those as soon as I can. Um, but that is um, the update this morning as far as our campgrounds. We've been doing this Facebook Live for about 30 minutes, so when I click off, you can go back to the beginning and watch the overview when it comes to a, when you can expect to be camping again. Probably not until June, uh, unfortunately. But, um, Really quickly to answer some of your last few questions, I see Benjamin Reed asking, do you know how to switch plates on a used car you purchased from a private party? So Benjamin, um, don't worry about that. When the DMV reopens, you can switch plates. For now, just carry your purchase agreement with you in your car or make a copy of it, probably safer for your records, save the original and keep a copy in your car. If you're ever pulled over and asked about your, um, asked about your the lack of your tags, just say you recently purchased the vehicle and you're waiting for the BMV to open to get a tag. You should not be penalized because obviously you can't do anything with the BMV closed right now, uh, but just keep a copy of your purchase agreement and you should be fine. Sue, I see you asking, how do you track down your stimulus check? You haven't received it yet. Go to irs.gov slash coronavirus and see um, under the get my payment link that tab, see if um, you are able to get an update as far as what it says. It should give you a date or when you can expect it. Um, so that is what we, that is where I would tell you to go if you have not received your payment yet. Um, go there and just um, check it out. So I see Lee is saying, glad I'm back. Thank you. Lee, thank you for your positivity. I appreciate it on this Monday. Um, I didn't see you guys all last week, and it's 